when we started the introduction for this section on financial statements, we talked about internal users and, and external users. And, and as we were looking at the very bottom here, that net income, you know, I, I think about um, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm part of the internal team on this one. So, so we do talk about tax planning and, and as we're sitting with the doc and, and, you know, we're not sitting for the first time in September, you know, we're looking at these financials beginning really six months into the year. So as a internal user with the client, with the doc, uh, as an advisor, Cheryl, to your point, we can start looking and saying, wow, we see a nice trend here. And we need to be thinking about a, a, a handful of things that we can do to either either mitigate that tax liability. And well, if there isn't much it. more we can do, you know, we're going to be in a situation where you're making more money. There's only so much we can do to limit that tax liability. We need to be thinking about setting money aside to either prepay some of that tax burden or have that ready when we file. Should should things change in the last quarter and we may not find ourselves in that same situation, but, but clearly a client that's performing this way is likely going to go in the fourth quarter still performing this way. So let's make sure we're adequately funding that tax liability, either through wages or estimated tax payments. Um, and, 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 you know, when we talk about Rachel and the valuation role, and we, again, we talk about internal versus external users, a lot of times Rachel and, and Rachel and Ke Kelly are looking at these financials as external users with the bank. And we're looking at these with a banker who's looking to potentially finance uh, a potential sale. And so these financial statements become this particular set of financials, this income statement, it's arguably the most mission critical statement a banker will use to underwrite um, a, 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 an acquisition. I'm going to so, disagree with you only on one point. Okay. This income statement does not take into consideration discretionary spending. So right. an adjusted or normalized yeah. income statement and is going to. Yeah. Yeah. The adjustments coming out, you know, so if there was a lot of travel in here, that may be pulled down a little bit. The meals and entertainment may be pulled out a little bit, right? It can, it, sure. it can, it can change a situation. Yeah. Discretionary and, meaning expenses being too small or expenses being too big. It can go yep. either way. And, and, and Rachel, when we get to the valuation section of this next month, we'll actually go through kind of the, the, the columns that you see and say, here's what you've reported, Doc, year over year over year. Here are the things that we're making adjustments for, We whatever they may be, whether they're up or down. And, the purpose of today's conversation, I have to go into that deep dive on that side of it, but clearly when we get into the valuation side of this, is one of the chapters in Norton's book, we, we do want to pay a lot of attention to that particular process, of course.